Hi. A few weeks ago, I demoed basically how to take this fantastic course here that I highly recommend for anybody that wants to learn how to develop microservices with ASP.NET Core and C Sharp using Docker. But I took the, uh, with the author's permission, I took the, uh, the course itself and deployed it over to a Kubernetes cluster just to show that the, uh, the files and the way that um, he organized the course and such, uh, it, everything was developed in such a way where it was really uh, very painless to port it over to an orchestration platform. But that was a uh, local platform that ran on localhost and it was great for development. And I suppose it could also run on-prem. So if you had your own business and you didn't want to go to the cloud, you you know, what I showed would pretty much work there, with the exception of certificates, because you want to you basically run those over HTTPS. So I thought about deploying that whole application to the AWS cloud. So these files right here at this GitHub, and I have all the examples and stuff like that. I mean, it's on GitHub, but I also have more detailed walkthrough on previous videos. But I just wanted to see how easy and or how hard or challenging it would be to deploy this application over to the AWS cloud. So as you can see right now, I'm using COPS and I won't really get into details on, on COPS, on how to create the Kubernetes cluster and things of that nature because there's plenty of resources out there on how to do that with COPS. But basically, I'm in the process right now of starting everything up, and I have the instructions out to a previous uh, link, which shows how you start up the whole application and stuff like that. So I'll just go ahead and you know include that in the link, so as not to really take up too much time here. So I need to start up more files here, but as you can see, I've got these pods running um, up in an EC2 instance up in the cloud. So anyways, I've uh, gotten these three started up so far. Now I'm going to kind of outline a few of the differences that I had to do to get this to, to work under AWS. But under the token server, what I need to do there is a 5VI, that deployment file. And I've already done this before. Um, I have a registered domain right here, and you would too. But basically, in here, I've got um, you know, MVC client right here, and I've set it to my domain. So that's one of the differences. And also for this particular example, I'm not going to allow Swagger uh, because I don't really want to mess with, uh, you know, we probably have to create either node port endpoints, um, you know, and places behind a ingress controller so that everything is uh, SSL terminated. Or we would, you know, have to create this basket API client or order API client as a uh, put it behind a uh, load balancer and get some certificates or wildcard certificates to protect those so that it's running under https because you don't you really don't want to be um, accessing those under the http protocol so anyways for the purpose of this argument since i don't really want to use the wildcard domains and all that kind of stuff with certificates i i just won't do the swagger thing in this case, but keep in mind that's what we would have to do, like in a in a real production environment, is you know run this over HTTPS. But in my case, you know, I'm just still going to run everything over HTTP. Um, but ultimately, if I deployed it in the production, I would start dealing with certificates and also putting some of these behind a load balancer, or ideally putting them behind a ingress controller, and then SSL terminating the Kubernetes ingress controller. So, and I think I've got an example on that on a, in a previous video that I did, and I can put a link to that as well. But anyhow, I put tbkosik.com because I do have a, uh, you know, a registered domain there. So now I'm just going to start up the token server here. Okay, and let's just go and see what we've got. And as you can see, it's starting to create the container right there. Doing an all, as you can see, we've got 
you know our services running here so i got this token server right here and we'll just see what we've got going up there kubectl logs and we can do a dash f right there so as you can see right now it's still building our token server and it's still initialized in the database so i'm just kind of waiting for that to start up uh, this is uh, potentially periodically, this is normal. It eventually completes on those timeouts. So let's see what we got here. Yeah, so it, this time it did complete. So the token server is up and running. And one of the key things here uh, that with the token server deployment, um, actually, if we look at the service, I just want to mention this too. Um, because, you know, here's another thing. Because it wrappers the identity server 4.0, which is an incredible thing that, that the author did here. Um, you know, so basically you can have your own token server using identity server, <clears throat> and you could place that on a totally different node of yours or a different host of yours or whatever. Um, I went ahead and fronted that and created a service of type load balancer. So ideally in the real world, what you'd really want to do here is you'd really want to SSL terminate your token server so that when you go out there and enter your password and it redirects back, it's all done over a, uh, you know, a secure connection. In this example, it's not secure. So this would not be real world ready, but it would be a minor adjustment to get that to happen again by getting another domain and or using wildcard certificates to do that, which I won't demonstrate on here but the key though is it I made it as a type load balancer so that it is exposed to the outside world so if you do a kubectl get service right here as you can see the token server is running now with a type of load balancer and what happens here is now here's my kubernetes cluster running as different instances so i've got my master and i've got my two nodes and there's ways to configure that where you can have more nodes but by creating that token server with the type load balancer, what ended up happening is it ended up creating in AWS another load balancer right here. Now this is the load balancer for the um, Kubernetes cluster master node. Or, so basically, not the master, but it's a, it's a load balancer for the, uh, the nodes itself. Um, but this one right here, this cryptic thing right here is basically the load balancer for the token server itself. Now, having said that, um, you know, I got to start up these these next ones here, which is like the cart, the, the cart and the order and the catalog, as well as the application. Now, I need this load balancer. I need this DNS name right here for the token server. And let's just see if it's uh, up and running and ready, actually. Oh, actually, it's got to be uh, port 5000. There we go. As you can see, when I hit that on port 5000, we get our token server coming up right here. So what I'm going to do is I am going to paste that. It's basically copy and paste that. And what I need to do right now is, uh, let's see here. I need to open up some more deployment files if I can get to it. Excuse me. So one of them is I need to do the order. Uh, let's do the cart one first. Cart deployment. And this identity URL, um, as you can see, I was testing before. I want to go ahead and use <clears throat> the new domain name for that load balancer for the token server that I put inside of here and place that as the value for the identity server. Now again, you know, I'll, I'll just sound like a broken record here because it's a disclaimer. I wouldn't do this in the real world in production. Instead, I would actually, you know, get uh, use wildcard certificates or whatever. But I would attach a uh, a record in Route 53, and I'll show you how we I do that for the main application. <clears throat> but I would attach an a record, an alias record, and basically alias it to the identity server. And then I would install a certificate potentially using like ACM or something of that nature <clears throat> so that we could hit the token server running HTTPS. But in this case, for the example, HTTP will do just fine because I'm gonna tear this whole thing down afterwards. 
Now I'm going to have to do the same thing for the order deployment YAML file. So this was from a previous run. So that particular load balancer that I just got rid of no longer exists. Actually, let me just go ahead and paste the order one right here. We will take that out of here and we will do the cart one. Got to make sure that these match up. And again, it would be running ideally in HTTPS with a certificate if we were to install this in production. Now, having made that change, what I can do now is I could start up the cart order and catalog. Shall we say deployments and services? So let's go ahead and do that. I am basically taking the stuff out of these files and pasting it right here because I got the instructions how I did that in a previous video. So that's why I won't go over these right here in this video because I just basically want to demonstrate getting this up and running in AWS. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we will do kubectl get pods. And as you can see, it's still creating the catalog service. Uh, we can just kind of take a look at the uh, logs if we wanted to. There we go. It looks like it may have passed. So there we go. So those are running. <clears throat> so now we want to do the WebMVC deployment. And there's a, something that we have to change inside of here. Just kind of playing around. Um, identity URL, it's the same thing. You're going to want to go ahead and grab the uh, the latest um, URL for that. So let me do that in a second. Also, um, the callback URL. I was just kind of experimenting with other things. You know, this is running locally in Docker, and and then I was doing it prior to registering my uh, load balancer for the <clears throat> main applications. I was doing it just by using the actual. I was playing around with Node port, so I was doing it by using the actual uh, domain for the load balancer, and then I went ahead and just used my own domain right here. But what I really do need is this um, identity URL. These are fine here. These service names here because they're still running um, privately in in the cluster itself. But let me go ahead and get the URL for the identity server. So. And it would have helped actually if I would have, uh, let's see here, copied that to my clipboard, which I didn't do. Oh, not the service, the deployment. So I want to grab this and paste this in my web MVC deployment because this was from a previous run, put it down here. And we should be good to go right here. And of course, you know, in production, you'd want to change this to the production environment, but that's, that's outside of the scope of this particular course here. Um, I do suggest that you purchase the uh, microservices course because he will get into uh, you know, specifics on what happens between those environments. This is just to get it running in AWS here. All right, so now we'll just say um, kubectl apply dash F and we'll just say WebMVC deployment right there. Also, let's um, expose our service. Now this is gonna be kind of interesting too. The main application, uh, the service itself is, again, that's going to be a type of um, load balancer. And that load balancer is a Kubernetes kind. So right here, um, and basically, <clears throat> instead of node port, which exposes your port, um, you know, globally from your cluster, you can also use load balancer. And when that's run in the cloud, particularly cops and things of that nature, um, it's going to go ahead and spin up another load balancer for that application up in the uh, AWS cloud. 
So let's go ahead and watch that in action. As you can see, if I go to my load balancers right here, I've got two because I've got my regular one for my Kubernetes cluster and then for my nodes, and then I've got the, the one for the identity server. Now I'm just going to go ahead and run the one for the main application. So you can see it's exposed to service. You can do a get service. As you can see right now, it's created a, another load balancer with this big URL right here, this domain name, and I will show you how I wire it up in Route 53 in a second here. But the key is now if I refresh, we've got an additional load balancer uh, right here. So that is our load balancer for our main application. And I know they are kind of hard to see. So let's go ahead and take a look at how far that's that's gotten. So we will say cube CTL, uh, we'll just get pods. And that looks like it's running. I can go ahead and do a logs on that. Actually, not get logs, but logs. Okay, so that's looking good. Now for the next step, which is going to be kind of interesting, is how do we access that? Um, so I want to basically use my domain name to access the main website. So I'm going to go into Route 53. And I've got some hosted zones, but one of the hosted zones um, has my domain name inside of there. What I'm going to do is create a record set. And this is where you can kind of, you know, this is where you would use uh, SSL and certificates. And again, I've got an example on that in a previous video. But I'm going to go ahead and create an alias record set right here. And for my, uh, let's see what we've got here. I'm going to refresh. Refresh so that we're going to see our, our additional load balancers show up here. So let's go ahead and do the aliases again. And actually, it's not showing up right now. So I have a situation where I'm probably just going to go and go back to my Route 53 again. Sometimes you got to do this in order to get it to show up. Because I created those load balancers um, while I had this window up and running. Now, as you can see, they show up down here under the classical load balancers. So let's make sure that I've got the right one. And the way I'm going to do that is, is look for the newest one, which is right here. And that starts with AC16. So if I go right here, so this is going to be an alias record, which goes to AC16 with www.tvkosic.com. Okay. Um, ideally, we want to do the same thing uh, with wild card certificates for, again, for the identity server. And then you, we could use something like uh, ACM, which is a certificate manager, to go ahead and install here so that you can access both this and the identity server using HTTPS. So now, Let's go ahead and uh, one second. One of the things I do want to do um, in a previous example, um, I kept getting burned by the HSTS, you know, with the browser doing its HSTS thing. And I think the other thing I can do is uh, after clearing that out, I can probably, let's see what we've got right here. Yes, as you can see from my drop down, I am definitely a baseball fan and I do follow the Chicago Cubs. Uh, sorry for anybody that does not like the Chicago Cubs, but, but anyways, that's a different story. So um, I can go to tbkosik.com over this non-secure channel. Again, we'd want to use ACM or something like that, like that. But, you know, right here, as you can see, we're up in the cloud and we've got this, you know, our add to cart. Okay. So now I'm going to hit the login, and something tells me I'm going to get an error. And I did. And the reason why I did is because I accidentally pasted in the wrong 
load balance her name, which is very easy to do. So if you take that out right there, you can see it, it's not able to be reached. So I did something basically careless. I pasted the wrong application, if you will. So we got to go back and kind of fix that. And what we really want then, I was wrong, is we, uh, we want the load balancer. I, I just used the wrong one. We want the load balancer for the identity URL, which is actually the oldest one, which is A1C. It's easy to do, which is why it's good to have a domain name or wildcard certificate for those things. So I'm going to go back into my deployment file. And whoops, I keep... I tell you, I keep choosing the wrong windows here. So let me go to the web deployment. For the identity server. And that's okay. It's a good thing to see uh, people making mistakes because it's, again, it's a very easy thing to do. I kind of like including my mistakes in my videos just to show that it doesn't always run completely smooth, but there's always a way for the most part to get around these. So now I'm pasting the right, the correct one. So let's go ahead and just say kubectl, and we will just say apply dash f, do the right deployment again. And I want to kind of make sure that I did the same thing for the other two. So we go back to order. It looks like we probably didn't. Looks like I probably got to make the same change there. Yeah, because we would have had the same issue. So sorry. Like I said, it's so easy to do. And I think, I'm pretty sure is it cart. Yeah, same thing. So that's gonna be going on port 5000 as well. No biggie. And I think that's the only one. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to say kubectl apply dash f cart deployment. And we want to do the same thing for order. Okay. And let's take a look at the logs. Uh, take a look at the logs for the cart. Okay, and let's take a look at the, as you can see, the old one is terminating right here for the order, and then we've got our new one, and we'll just do the one. I just kind of get in the habit of always doing logs for these just to make sure everything starts up. Okay, so we got that going. So now let's go ahead and, and give this a try again and see if we can get one step further. So let's... Go ahead and say www.tbcosic.com. Let's see what we've got here. Ah, this time, this time we're pointing to the right load balancer right here. So we've got our screen. Now let's go ahead and, and use the example from the course, which you can get when you buy it. Let me make sure I type in the right password. And as you can see, I am now logged in up in the AWS cloud. And this is working right here. Let's see, can I add something to the cart? I can. And here's my cart. I can update the quantities and I can check out. I can, I can basically do an order. Pay and place order. As you can see, the order was complete. 
and we can look at our order history. There's our order. We can show the details. So I think I will stop right there um, in this particular example. But what we ended up doing was deploying this application up to the AWS cloud. And behind the scenes, just do keep in mind that it will go ahead and create um, load balancers for you. So it can be, uh, you know, you just kind of want to make sure uh, it can be a little bit expensive. I mean, you'll pay the regular you know, prices for your cloud or your business and all that kind of stuff. But when you're kind of tinkering around as I am, you'll want to make sure that you tear down your clusters when you're done so that you don't incur, incur you know, more charges than you need to. Um, again, so in this case, we've got two load balancers. We've got one for the main web app and another one for the identity server. And we also have EC2 instances. And we will basically have, uh, you know, our two instances for our nodes right here, our two Kubernetes nodes. And then we will uh, basically have the master instance right here for Kubernetes master. And behind the scenes, you know, we've got the load balancers, which uh, COPS is using to route traffic over to our main application, as well as our token server. And again, I can't stress enough, you know, I would not deploy this actually in production simply because I'm not SSL terminating those two load balancers. Uh, that you would have to, again, you would have to use wildcard certificates or what have you. And for the token server, I don't like using that, that big long URL name or that domain name for the load balancer. So that's why I would actually qualify it with a, a valid domain for the token server, uh, as long as it's all running under HTTPS. Now, is there anything else I think I need to do for this demo? Let's try. I did just kind of want to make sure though, um, as you can see, I'm SSH'd into my EC2 instance here. KubeCTL, get nodes. Did kind of want you to see right here. So, you know, I'm using COPS. So I could say COPS validate cluster. And as you can see, you know, it's just basically telling you my my master, what it's running, which subnets and my regular nodes here. So here's my master and my two nodes here. Uh, this is all configurable. You know, COPS is like a whole other thing unto itself. And like I said, there's plenty of documentation on how to install that inside of AWS. Uh, let's see, what I like to do is um, I like to basically install COPS on a bootstrap node that I create, which is an EC2 instance. And I can even make that a nano instance. And I, when I'm done with my examples, I will usually park my instance by putting it into a stop state and then just paying some small charges monthly for the volume right there so that I don't have to keep recreating that over and over again. Uh, also, I'm using medium instances instead of the large ones just for testing purposes. But I think that's all I, I wanted to say is, you know, you just wanted to demo in this part. Uh, another thing you could do instead of having a load balancer for the um, token server or whatever, you could potentially use a, uh, a node port to expose that. And, you know, again, if it was running behind an ingress controller, which was SSL terminated, then that token server could potentially be uh, protected with certificates too. Now, what would the advantage of that be? Well, the advantage of that would be it might could be slightly less because you won't have to incur the extra expense of another load balancer because load balancers can be potentially expensive. Um, as you can see, you know, we you want to be careful with your services by by creating a type load balancer and really only using them where where needed. In this case, it might be okay uh, to have a load balancer for your identity server. Um, especially if you're doing federations where your identity server may not necessarily be in, you know, in a Kubernetes cluster unto itself. So, you know, there are there are times where you would want to have load balancers for them. So, and so I was just kind of simulating that in this case. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you got a little bit out of it. And thanks again for watching. So you take care.